Today's exercise is to create a drawing of our phone handset uh, part that we've created previously. Uh, this exercise is going to be um, reasonably complex in that uh, you haven't created a drawing before and we're going to use a fairly complex part to create this drawing. Now the reason for that is because if I show you a simple part um, when you come to creating more complex or drawing up more complex parts, which you will, uh, you'll find it difficult. So hopefully this will show you some of the more um, uh, more useful and more complex techniques for uh, drawing, creating drawings. So the first thing you need to do is, this, there's two ways of doing this. You can either create a new um, new drawing, and this comes, you've got the option of creating a new drawing from here or a part or an assembly. There is a quicker way though, if you have this part already open, you can simply go to file and say make drawing from part. What it will then do is ask you uh, what sheet size you want. Um, in this case it's defaulting to A3. I'm going to use an A2 because I know we're going to have lots of section views and this is going to be a reasonably complex drawing. So I'm just going to hit OK and it comes up with a drawing sheet like this. And on the right hand side you've got a series of views that you can um, drag and drop into uh, the, uh, the, the view. Now I like to use a small isometric view um, first so I'll just drop, drag and drop that into the, uh, into the view. The reason for that is it gives the, um, the person who's viewing your drawing um, a very clear understanding of uh, of what the part's going to look like. Before we create any more views, what we need to do is we need to check a couple of things out to make sure that uh, our standards of our drawing uh, are going to be correct. So for that we need to go to Tools, Options and Document Properties. The first thing we want to look at is Drafting Standard. We want to make sure that um, our drafting standard is in ISO, that stands for International Standards Organization, and not ANSI, which is the American one, or JIS, Japanese, and there's a few others. Um, so make sure it's on ISO. The next thing we need to check is to make sure that our drawing sheet uh, is in um, th using third angle projections. So if we right click on where it says Sheet Format, go to Properties, now you'll see that we've got in the top middle here we've got the option of first angle or third angle. Now in Australia we use third angle projection, uh, not first angle. Uh, if you don't know the difference between first angle and third angle projection, uh, I suggest that you Google it and find out uh, what it means. Uh, it's a bit beyond the scope to explain it all here. Um, but it's important that you understand the difference between first angle and third angle because confusing them is not a good thing. Okay, next we're going to add in a few more views. To do that we go to the view layout tab here. We go, we select model view and then just double click on where it says open documents and you'll see that we've got a few, we've got view orientation down here so we can select the view that, that we, we want. Um, in this case I'm going to select the top view I'm just going to drag and drop that into place there. From there we can actually then drag sideways and we can drag another view out to here. That's probably what we want. Let's have a, a bottom view as well. We might delete these later. We'll just see how they go. Hit escape. Now we can move these views around to the place that we want and you can see that those views will remain in relation to that first view that we've created. We want to create one more view. We're going to create a, a projected view. So we're going to use this view here and we're going to go to projected view and that will just drag. As you can see if it flips from the side where the uh, ribs are visible to the other side, basically the inside and the outside, uh, depending on which side uh, of the, the part it is. Now as you can see this is third angle projection and that's and not first angle so that works perfectly. Um, and, and you can even see you can drag it at an angle and put an, an angled view in there. We don't need that for, uh, for what we're doing at the moment. Now the reason why we create an, an engineering drawing is so that someone is able to make this part without us actually explaining anything. All the information needs to be on this drawing uh, to allow someone to make 
the parts. We need to put dimensions on the drawing. Dimensions have to be thought through fairly carefully because it's very easy to put dimensions on a drawing which are not necessary. Uh, I should also point out there is an automatic dimensioning button. Um, don't ever use it because it just puts stupid dimensions on that don't mean anything. Um, that becomes very obvious when if you use it. So the reason for having different views is simply so that we can put dimensions on in the clearest, most logical way uh, possible so that to eliminate any mistakes being made. Okay, so I want to first first I'm going to try and put some dimensions on these two um, holes. Um, what will be easier, rather than trying to put it on this view, is to create uh, a section view uh, that shows the, the holes in, uh, in profile. So to create a section view, we first need a line to, uh, to cut the model and to create the section view uh, with. So we're going to create a center line, and we're going to just drag a center line vertically down um, through the middle of, uh, of our part. So you just want to make sure that that is actually on the center line. You might have to move it to uh, to adjust it. Um, if it's still is creating problems, you can um, select this line and you can then control select the, the vertical plane that goes through the middle and put a relation to them. Quite often you'll find that it'll, it'll automatically get a relationship um, and, and it'll be in the right spot. So once we have that line, we go to view layout, we go to section view and hit OK and now this will cut a, a view, uh, a section view through the part and allow us to just drag and drop that section view uh, off to the side. Right now these um, these faces here are uh, represent the hole. Um, what we need to do is put some uh, center lines into that, onto those holes. So to do that we go to uh, insert annotations and then go down to where it says center line. It's a different center line to the sketch center line, so don't confuse the two. Then we just need to select the uh, one of the cylindrical surfaces, and what that will do is put center lines into um, all of the uh, cylindrical faces um, of our part. So it's also put some angled center lines through here because there are cylindrical faces um, on. Um, on the, these two ends for the speaker and the microphone area. Once we have that, we can then put dimensions on these um, these center lines. So we can put a dimension between these two holes. Um, that's very simple. Uh, we can then, if we zoom in, we can then see if we select these edges here, we can put a, uh, a diameter of the hole. Uh, we can select that again, put a diameter on the hole. If we select these two outside faces though, we'll end up with an angle, so that will give us a, um, a draft angle for the holes as well. Now, um, uh, next thing is to create an angle between these two faces, so uh, that's a 30 degree angle between those, not, sorry, not faces, the, uh, the center lines of those areas. Um, and one final thing we're going to do, to position this, we've got an angle, but we also we need to have a diameter. So if I select this diameter, I'm just going to click, click on that face there, select that diameter. But you'll see what it's done is created a very long leader, which we don't really want. But there's two problems with this particular dimension, that leader and the number of decimal places. So if we select that dimension, Go over to the left here and where it says leaders, and if we just select multi job leader, what that will do is just re remove that uh, the length of that leader. Go back to where it says value. Now we only want to have one decimal place because trying to uh, measure uh, a radius like that to two decimal places is just absurd. So really, um, we don't want any decimal places. Uh, so that'll round that down to, or up to. 188. So now I'm going to continue to put other dimensions on this part. Um, we can put a radius dimension on here. Um, again, that one we don't really want that to be two decimal places. So I'm going to go over to the um, value precision and select none, so no decimal places. Um, we can then put in other radii in these corners. 
um, we can put um, a draft angle here. And so what I'm going to do is it's a little bit different here. I'm going to put two degrees there, but instead of going around and putting draft on um, on every um, angle there, I'm just going to put in um, TYP, which stands for typical. That means that, um, in fact, I'll call it typical draft. And that means then all other drafts, the assumption is that we've got a two degree uh, draft angle on all those ribs. There are quite a few things that get assumed with engineering drawing. Uh, it takes a while to pick up the things that are, are, are assumed. For example, um, I'm only dimensioning one side of this. Because this part is pretty much symmetrical, uh, there's an assumption, you know, this hole for example, there are two holes and I'm only going to dimension one because the other one, it's assumed, will be the same. Um, you have to be very careful obviously with assumptions, but that's a convention that's followed um, fairly closely. Right, uh, so the next thing I can see we need to do is have a width, um, an overall an overall length and width of the part. Now that's always important um, and it's important to select the, the right views for that. I'm going to use this view here because this, uh, this one is already starting to get cl fairly cluttered and the overall uh, length is fairly easy to determine uh, from that. So I'm just going to put a dimension on there um, and again I'm not worrying about that it's going to be two decimal places. So uh, that gives us an overall we can't put a width on there because we can't see it on that view, so I'm going to put a width on this particular view here. Put that up there. Um, now you'll note that I'm dragging the dimensions well clear of other dimensions. Clarity is really important for an engineering drawing, so it's important that we have um, dimensions not sitting on top of each other, and also dimensions should never appear within the boundary of the uh, outline of the part. So just looking at this, I've got an overall width and, and um, I've got dimensions on here. Um, well, one thing I don't have yet is uh, a typical wall section. So I'm going to select a wall section which is parallel. Um, so I select the side of that, and click on there. And again, I'm going to add some extra uh, text saying uh, TYP wall thickness. Just uh, move that somewhere where it's a little bit clearer. Right now, the final thing I need to do is select some, add another view so that we can um, dimension up these uh, these features in here. Um, because I can't dimension it on this view because we're not looking directly at 90 degrees to that face. Because as you can see, that's an angled face. So. I'll need to create a view which which is at 90 degrees to this face uh, and that's what we call an auxiliary view. So if I select that line, go to view layout, auxiliary view and what that allows us to do is to drag and drop uh, a view and as you can see that view is now oriented so that it's looking directly down onto that face. So I'll just select that. Um, it's starting to get a little bit cluttered here, so I'll start moving views around a little bit. Now we don't want to see this. This part here is irrelevant because we only really want to dimension up this this end here. So what I'm going to do is to create um, uh, a, a a view that only shows this end, and I'm going to start off by creating a. I'm going to use a spline, and convention again says that you have a a wavy line. So we'll create a spline that determines the, the bit that we want to see. And now if we go to view layout and we go to um, uh, crop view, that will then cut away all the, the bits of the view that we don't want. Right, so now we can start putting dimensions on, on here. Um, I'll put a dimension on that circle. Uh, and center mark tool, which which if we click on this um, circle here, we'll put a center mark in here. We can then go to sketch and we can put in a, a circle. We can select the center of that center mark and then we'll just drag it to the center of one of those holes. Now that creates um, some construction geometry. We can then put a dimension on that. Um, 
And as I said, that's generally called a, a pitch circle diameter. And uh, and so if we just edit the, edit this um, this text and put um, PCD, which t which stands for pitch circle diameter, uh, an uppercase. That tells us that that's uh, simply a circle which uh, which just defines the uh, the positioning of those smaller circles. Um, and again, let's just put that on to uh, round it down to 12. Hit OK. And that's probably about it for that particular view. Next, I'm going to put some dimensions on the uh, the screw bosses on the inside, or rather those holes that um, where the screws go through. Now, I could just put dimensions directly on here, but I'm going to use a um, uh, a detail view. Now, to create a detail view, uh, we need to create a circle and just drag a circle out around that that view and then go to where it says view layout, detail view and what that will do is it will create a view which is um, which is larger and we can determine how big we want that to be and we just drag and drop it uh, pretty much anywhere, it doesn't matter where it sits um, and then we have a larger view, now this is 2 to 1 instead of 1 to 1 and that makes it just a little bit easier and a little bit clearer to put um, some of these dimensions that we need to have uh, in place. Okay, so. So I'm going to create some sketch geometry, so a center line, um, and I'm just going to draw it here. What I'm going to do now is create a relationship between this line that I've just drawn up and this line here and make them tangent. So no matter where I move that line now, it's always going to be tangent to, to that face. I'm going to create one more uh, center line and I'm going to make that uh, perpendicular to the to that construction line that I've just created. And I'm also going to make the end of that line and this curve coincident. Right. So by doing that, what that's allowed me to do is to create um, a line which will always be uh, perpendicular to that curve, no, no matter where I put it. Now I could put a dimension on this line, say an angle, um, so that I can adjust the angle. Um, I'm just going to leave it so that it's able to be moved. So if I select that line, I can now go to uh, section view, so view layout, section view. And because it doesn't actually go all the way through the part, it says, do you want this to be a partial section, uh, partial section cut? Yes. Hit OK and now it's given me a view which cuts through uh, the part uh, where that section line is. So that's exactly what I want. Well, it's not exactly what I want. This is actually a very um, busy looking thing. All I'm interested in is the sectional profile. So if I click on that viewport um, and go to where it says section view display only cut faces, hit OK. What that now allows me to do is just have that section that goes just through uh, where that line is. Um, I'm not worried about the uh, the rest of the, uh, the the view. So that allows me now to, to quite easily put some dimensions on this part um, and as I've done before um, just create views like this so these dimensions are there. Um, we can put uh, the height of the rib for example, a whole bunch of things which uh, very easy to do on this view but will be very difficult to do uh, on other views. Okay, last thing we'll, we're going to do is looking at this now, this is looking very messy so um, what I'll do is just move some of these views around. And this is the beauty of of, um, uh, of SolidWorks and the way that uh, drawings can be created that it's, it's a very neat, very fast way of getting a, a very um, nice looking drawing created. Okay. The final thing we're going to do is make sure that this uh, drawing um, uh, title box is uh, is filled in as much as we possibly can. So if you look at this we have things like material, we have weight, we have um, uh, a drawing number. 
and each one of these properties is editable. So there are two ways of editing this uh, title block. We can uh, edit it manually or we can edit it automatically. Um, automatically is certainly the, um, the better way of doing it. I'll show you how to, we can modify some things uh, manually though and I'll show you how to do that first. So if you right click on the drawing, um, the drawing frame and then go to where it says edit sheet format then you'll see that the um, everything turns blue. Uh, if you scroll your, your cursor over these boxes you'll find that um, a little icon comes up that, that will come up with um, PRP sheet description or if we go over to material it'll go PRP sheet material. Um, we can just click on those and, and edit them manually. Um, for example, if I edit the uh, the size, this one here, if I edit the uh, the size of that text because it's too big, I'll make it a little bit smaller. Um, uh, we could also just edit the text itself, but that text has been put in there automatically, and um, and I'll show you how to how to use this uh, this automatic um, process. So just right click on that and go back to edit sheet. Now to do that, this, come, this information comes from um, the properties of the actual part that you've created. So if you go back to the original part, so if you haven't created or selected a material for your part yet, it's probably a good time to do so. So just right click on there and you can edit the material or just select one of the ones from here. Um, I'm going to use ABS PC. Um, it's changed the material properties of the, uh, of the, the part, but that's fine. It's not going to affect our drawing. Um, the other way of editing the information is if you go to File, Properties, and you will need to select these property names. So I'm going to select uh, the material, select that, and you know that's a text. Where, where it comes to value, I can actually I can add, I can manually put um, the material into where it says value, or I can just go down and I can select material from this drop down. Thing. And what that will do is it will automatically put in the material. And as you can see, it's got the evaluated value there, ABS PC, which is what we want. Um, the next property is weight. Um, and again, if I go to this drop down menu, I can uh, select mass, which is really the same thing. Um, and that will calculate the weight of my part based on the material that I've selected. Uh, I can keep going down here and put in a part number. Um, and I can put that information in manually, blah, blah, blah. Um, now, what else have we got? Finish, uh, and so on and so on. There's a whole bunch of things that can be put, put in place here. So let's just leave it at that for now. Hit OK. Now, if we go back to our drawing, what we will find is that the material has now become ABS PC, which is what we wanted. Um, we have a weight down here, which um, which will be in grams. Uh, we haven't got a title yet. I, I, I could put the title into that um, uh, properties thing. We could put a revision in there as well and, and finish and so on. Um, this drawing area here, you can put in a name um, of the person who's drawn it, the person who's checked it, the person who's approved the drawing, and so on. So that means that makes our drawing pretty much complete. Uh, we can add, um, as I said, we can move things around and neaten things up a little bit here. Um, there are probably a few other dimensions that need to go on. Uh, for example, we need to put in dimensions for these ribs. Uh, we need some dimensions on how thick they are and how uh, where they're spaced. Um, and we also need to to put another view to uh, to show this grill on the bottom because it's a bit different. So there is a little bit more to do and I'll leave that up to you to complete the drawing um, but you've, you should be able to create all the drawing views and dimensions that you need uh, from the information shown so far. So good luck.